Hey guys, me, Robert Chris Tomer here with this Tuesday afternoon mountain weather update. I want to show you where it is snowing on radar. There it is, uh, Wyoming, a big shield of blue, which is snow up there all the way down to the valley floors in a lot of Wyoming. The flow is not great for the Tetons, but it is snowing hard over the Wind Rivers and all the way past Riverton down to Casper. Hoggenden's going to get in on this. And um, to the south of it in Colorado, here's radar out of Colorado. We had a pretty good surge of snow overnight and early this morning. Now we're just seeing light snow across the mountains of Colorado. And I think that's the way it stays tonight because all the energy is up in Wyoming. In fact, the, the storm track itself has shifted even a little bit further to the north into Wyoming. So those are the favorite areas. But what's going to happen on the back side of this is the low comes through tomorrow, everything's going to rotate and pivot around the area of low pressure in the snow. The moderate snows will come back to Colorado. Everything will come back through. And that's when I think we're going to see our chance of a rain snow shower in the Denver area is tomorrow when everything slides back through. Let me take you to uh, Utah. Still seeing snow in Utah. You can see the blue up against the Wasatch, the High Uintas. In fact, you can see it at Alta. It is still snowing um, up there at Alta in Little Cottonwood Canyon. All right, here's the lay of the land on water vapor satellite imagery. So moisture aloft is in the whites and the blues. There's our area of low pressure. It's gonna track through Wyoming primarily. And then as it does into tomorrow, especially tomorrow, the low will be over here. And on the back side, everything will rotate in around it and we'll get a whole different flow pattern as a result. And then behind you, you've got a pretty sizable area of low pressure. A piece of this will break off and run through the northern tier. It'll be fast and weak. The main part of this is going to go down through the Sierra and become a southern track low that will eventually come back to the north. But I have some bad news on that. The latest trends are not good with that third storm. And I had mentioned the last couple of days, the possible of some phasing doesn't look like that's going to happen now. Here are my bullet points. So for this afternoon, we've got our current storm system through 1030, especially for Wyoming and Colorado. Um, that's just where the best setup is going to be as the low kind of circulates through. Um, and then we've got a fast weaker second storm for the northern tier, Pacific Northwest, BC, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, 1031 through about 11.2. Um, the third storm system, like I was saying, right now I, I'm not banking on a phase, and I'll explain what that means coming up. There's still going to be snow with the third storm, but maybe not as impressive. Um, and you can see the key time frames for snow right there in the Wasatch, Tetons, and in Colorado. All right, let me show you the jet stream forecast. So by close of business today, there it is. You can see our trough or dip in the low pressure coming through Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, and eventually right there into Colorado. So that's why we have leftover snow occurring tomorrow in my forecast for Wyoming and Colorado. It's on the backside. Then you can see in the Pacific Northwest, here comes our weaker, faster northern track. Boom, right there. Kind of runs right through the northern tier, and then it's done. But the main piece of this is going to come south. Look at it into California, right through the Sierra, and it goes all the way down to the U.S.-Mexican border and just sits there. Now, the last couple of days, it looked like when this low starts to make its move and, and hooking back to the north into New Mexico, Four Corners, Colorado, it looked like at the same time there was a cold front coming south and the two were going to phase or at least partially be phased because that would create a bigger storm system. Doesn't look like that in this update. You can see the low. In fact, it's gone. And by the time the cold front comes in, you can see it tries to redig on the back side. There's just nothing there. In fact, it's much easier to see it here on the forecast radar and satellite. So there we are by 530 this afternoon. Most of your snows in Wyoming um, through parts of Utah and in the central and northern mountains of Colorado. By tomorrow morning, you can see what's happening. The low begins to move more. Everything starts to rotate uh, on the back side of the low and the snow reemerges in most of Colorado. Still there in the afternoon on Wednesday over the mountains of Colorado. And again, tomorrow we can see rain snow mix in Denver. Certainly a pretty sizable temperature drop, but nothing significant for the Denver area. You can see the next storm hitting the Pacific Northwest. That's the one that's fast and weak. Hits Idaho, Montana, BC, Wyoming. May brush the extreme northern part of Utah on its way through. Then it's gone. Here comes the final low. Drops to the south through the Sierra here on 11-1, 11-2, uh, even into early 11-3. And then it becomes a southern track storm, and it's ragged. This is 11-4 late in the day. It's already making its move into Colorado. You can see the snow 
through Colorado and New Mexico, it's it's moving much faster than the cold front. You can see it coming in from Canada with all that snow and colder air. The low is gone, basically. It, look at it. It's moving out into the heartland by the time the cold front comes in to Montana, Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado. So what we're going to see on 11.5 is primarily from the cold front, and it should be mostly snow because it's going to be a much colder air mass. Uh, we'll get some decent snow accumulation, but not as good as what I was thinking. And then that just kind of slides through on a northwest flow uh, and potentially develops down into New Mexico. So interesting development this afternoon. Um, here are my numbers. Rest of uh, today, basically tonight through tomorrow, maybe another inch or two, maybe three up in uh, Little and Big Cottonwood Canyons, up in Wyoming, maybe an inch over the Tetons, three, four, five, six over the Wind Rivers, and potentially up to 10 inches for Hagadon. In Colorado, most of what you see there happens tomorrow. We might see another inch tonight, but maybe two, three, four inches tomorrow um, as the low kind of kicks its way on through. Here's the final time period. So this is where we have that, that second storm that hits the northern tier and then the main low that drops to the south. And um, you can see the effect definitely keeping the snow uh, mounts lighter through a lot of Colorado and New Mexico, but there's still going to be some, um, probably three to six, maybe seven across the Sierra. So those numbers have also gone down a touch, but the numbers have stayed um, pretty, uh, pretty high up in parts of uh, the Tetons, the Yellowstone area. Anywhere in pink, purple is over a foot, and that even includes parts of Idaho and even northwest Montana, BC. Those numbers have gone up. Uh, in the Pacific Northwest, looking at potentially a foot or more now. So you can see the um, the shift from this morning. You can definitely see the shift. If without the phasing of that cold front in that area of low pressure, everything just kind of stays to the north. The bigger numbers stay up to the north. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this afternoon mountain weather update. Appreciate you tuning in here and take care.